Good evening, everyone. Can anybody hear me? Good evening. Good evening, Ma. Good evening. How are you? Good evening. Good evening. Wow, wow, wow. The day is here already. Thank God. Yeah, all welcome. You're welcome. Status in, please. Can you give us opening prayer? Status in, okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, let's be in the mode of prayer. Father, in Jesus' name. Father, Lord, we thank you for what you have done in our lives. We thank you for allowing us to witness another youth week. Um, for this year, 2024, Lord Jesus Christ, we pray that as they're about to start, Lord, program, we pray that you start with us in Jesus' name. And we pray that whatever is being taught, O oh Lord, yes, yeah, that we'll be able to use it for ourselves and to glorify God in the name of Jesus. For in Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Thank you much. Amen. All right. Good evening once again, everybody. Is your happy to be here? Just give. Just um, uh, send a, a happy mode or something. Just send something to show how happy you are to be here this evening because there's so much to be learned so much for us to take home that would tell on the call i'm not I don't know if I'm trying to Sabuko, please that would tell on the call thank you thank you thank you no yes All right then. So, um, while we wait for him, while we wait for him to join the call, I want us to just okay, thank you. I want us to just um, say one or two things. You are here this evening to learn and to you know to gain or to have a breast of one or two things. So, can we just? share with ourselves can we just give ourselves uh, let's just talk about what we are expecting what are you looking forward to gaining from this experience here tonight what is your expectation what are you looking forward to there are so many let's start from you now start from me yes I said, let's let's start from you. What are your own expectations? Start from you, then to flow down. Okay, from me, I'm looking forward to you know, based on the topic, or what we are looking at. We are looking at like how to balance it up now. In this, in the um, society we find ourselves today, you know, many a times you look at people successful in a particular field, maybe in their career, but marriage issues or maybe they are successful in marriage or in relationship with people and things like that but now we want to learn how to you know be able to manage the whole thing being able to be successful in your career then has it now some of us are settled already some are looking forward to settling down you know how can we balance it up how will i be able to manage it when you know how being able to manage my career and also with my marriage to be successful in all aspects so i look forward to gaining more experience as regards that and to be able to you know make use of those things i learn to you know make better my life both now and the future god help me so that's my expectation so any other person can have the floor what your expectations are from tonight's meeting. Uh, I want to learn how to become a better person. I believe that knowledge will be shared on how to balance life, ministry, marriage, 
and uh, even other aspects of my life. I hope to be able to learn from experienced people like Mommy Bilal and Daddy Oditola. Thank you. Okay, thank you, sir. Any other person? Do you, what's your expectation from the meeting of tonight? Why are you here? Good evening, everyone. So for me, I want to learn how to thrive in my career as a Christian. So what we see out there is, you know, people that are not necessarily Christians that are making waves. So I want to learn how to manage this terrain that is not exactly spiritual and still thrive. And also, I want to learn how to balance things like my career, my relationship, my faith, without feeling overwhelmed, you know, juggle everything and I'm still in control. So I'm looking forward to insights on those things. Thank you. Wow, wow. That's, that's a, that's wonderful. All right. Um, okay, thank you, thank you. Any other person or, you know, I, I think we should also, okay, but is there anybody, other person that wants to talk about what they are looking forward to? Okay, then I also want us to just introduce ourselves. You know, can, I think I can see about we're about six years now, so we can just all mute one after the other and let's introduce ourselves. Well, my name is Fason Oluwa Fumilayo. Uh, that's my name, and I I got to know about this this program, be from the church. I'm a member of Foursquare Gospel Church, Japan Gospel. So we can just go in that in that route. Thank you. And My name is Ibukonluwa Gundari, and I learned of this program through our platform. And I'm a member of Foursquare Jack on Day District, Jack on Day District at Gothas Church. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Next person, please, anybody can just unmute them. Good evening, everyone. My name is Carol Moshaliva. Um, okay. True Church, our platform. I'm from the district headquarters. Sorry? I, we can't, I think you tripped up at the point. Please go okay, by can you hear me? Okay. Yes. Please. Okay, I, I said my name is Carol Mishaliwa. Okay. I'm from Jakonde State District Headquarters. I learned okay. about this program from our platform. That's church platform. Thank you. All right. You're welcome. All right. Next question. Okay. okay. My name is um, Uluwato Sinoke. And I also heard about this program from the church platform. Yay, welcome, sis. Next person. I can see some other people on the call that have not introduced themselves. James, Ima. Uh, Can you hear me? Okay, I think um, it is left. All right, then. So we are still um, waiting for our speaker, our first speaker. We have, like, we must have gotten to know, we have two topics, two um, sections tonight that we'll be talking about. And we have two speakers that will be talking about, I mean, that will be giving us insights based on their wealth of experience as regards the topic we want to discuss tonight. So while we are wait, while we still have wait, um, the speaker for tonight, we just, we can just, um, 
you can just look at uh, maybe how between I think talking to ourselves or can we just I'm I'm sorry please for just that I was nice. Can we just maybe have a mental few section of worship like just to worship God and you know just this is a week. So let's just sing a few songs um to to worship God. Praise the Lord. Can you hear me? Is anybody hearing me? Please. I just need the response. I can hear you. Can hear you. Yes. Okay. okay. So let's just sing. And um, wow, wow, wait. Adonai, we worship you. We worship you. Son of God. This. You are so good. You are so good. Oh, yeah, yeah, you are so good. You are so good, Almighty God. I love I you. I will be your name. We are grateful. Oh, Lord, we are great. Oh, Lord, hallelujah. God, you have done for us. Hallelujah, we are great. Oh, Lord. We are grateful, Lord. We are grateful. Oh, Lord. We are grateful. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Oh, for us. Oh, Hallelujah, we are great. Let's thank God. I need to appreciate God for this evening. Let's thank God for the privilege to you know be gathered to be able to learn again. You know, let's thank God for everything He has been doing and all He will do for us tonight. For all that we'll learn, let's appreciate the name of the Lord. Let's just thank God. Let's just open our mouth and begin to appreciate the King of Kings. Father, we appreciate you, Lord. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you for tonight. We thank you, oh God, for your love. Thank you for your mercy. We thank you for the youth week. Thank you because of the privilege to be able to, you know, see this day and to start the youth week on this um, wonderful day. Lord, we give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. We appreciate your holy name. We say be there exalted. For making us to be partaker of this year's youth week, oh God, it has just been you. It's not by our power, it's not by our might, it's by your grace. Now that we say we are grateful, Lord, accept our thanks and praises in Jesus' name. Lord, we worship you, we worship you, we appreciate you. We thank you for even from this day one, oh God, to the last day. We thank you because you will take charge and because your name alone will be glorified. So thank you because your presence will manifest. Thank you because you will glorify yourself. And none of us that will be partaker of any of the parts of the program will live empty handed. Daddy, we worship you. Lord, we give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. Are we thanking God? Let's just worship God. Let's just thank God. Lord, we give you all the glory. We give you all the praise. We appreciate your holy name. We appreciate your holy name. We appreciate your holy name. In Jesus' name, we have worshiped. Amen. Let's pray also for the program. Let's pray that God will take preeminence for every sect, every day of this program that God will take charge, especially this day one that we have started today, that God will have his way. And for everything 
and for the speakers let's pray for them that god will use them to speak to our lives and all these things that we'll learn tonight which will bless us both now and in our future and the grace we need to be able to succeed both in our career in our marriages in our relationship and every aspect of our lives god will give unto us in jesus name let's pray father in the name of jesus lord god almighty we pray even concerning this youth week that by your grace you have started today Holy Spirit, we pray you take charge, O oh God, concerning tonight's meeting. Have your way. We are the life of our facilitators, O oh God. Please take charge, O oh God, and speak through them to each and every one of us, O oh God. That through their, um, their teachings tonight, O oh God, we have those insights we need, Lord, to, to fulfill your plans and purpose for us in Jesus' name. Peace. Tonight, the ministers, in the name of Jesus, they will talk to us in the name of are we praying are we praying Let's pray that God will take charge all that we are going to learn tonight to benefit us both now and in the future. In Jesus' name we are praying. Amen. Each end of this, we thank you for tonight. We appreciate you once again. For the privilege to come and learn. Lord, I pray all that will learn to benefit us both now in the future in Jesus' name. Father, Amen. take charge of everything that will be done this evening, oh God. And Lord, Amen. at the end, let your name alone be glorified in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for answers to prayers. In Jesus' most powerful name, we have prayed. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Good evening once again, everybody. You're welcome to the first day. Charlie, what's what sense? Let's say now. Okay, sir. I have back motor. I need this slide. Okay. Okay, sir. Oh, yeah, yeah. I don't know how to use the yeah, touch it so I can be talking. All right. Praise the Lord. I can. I can hear our yeah. other food that is in the is on the call already. Uh, so our speaker now to our speaker, the first speaker for tonight is on the call already, and it will be starting right about now. Uh, I'll just I'll just give a brief profile of him, and then um, we'll take the floor. Okay, so I want to read the profile of of um the name of our speaker is um G King Ola Inka um Odutola. Ola Inka Odutola is a professional banker with about three decades experience. This court. Uh, this cut across enterprise. Okay. I'm sorry, please. I'm trying to. Online Carol the Corner is a professional banker with about three decades of experience. This cut across enterprise with risk management and Basel Access framework, framework design and implementation, credit risk management, credit policy. Hmm? Credit for shows which I'm already on research, research and management, banking operations, customer relationship management, audits, inspection, collections, and loan recovery, special asset management to banks. He has he also has a brief stint in the mortgage banking. Hello, industry. good evening. Extensive. So is is um we are privileged this evening to have you know one of our daddies with us that wants to share with us from his wealth of experience you know he's a successful career person he's an impact maker you know he's a devoted husband husband he's a loving father and um he's also a mentor he's a mentor to many of us 
and you know with Jesus joy, I want us to you know celebrate our daddy, daddy Olayinka Odutola. You'll be taking us on the topic spiritual. Thank you. Good evening. I want to be sure that everybody is everyone is hearing me. Charlie, are you hearing? I can see your hand everywhere. Good evening, sir. I can hear you. I can hear you. I can hear you, sir. I'm going, sir. I'm going, sir. I'm going, sir. Yeah. We can hear you, sir. Tosi, if uh, James, are you hearing me? Very well, we can hear you. Yes, I can hear you. Yes, I can hear you, sir. Yes, I can hear you, sir. Thank you very much. God bless you. You are all welcome to this gathering today. It's exciting to be in the midst of every one of us. It's exciting to make me to come and present to this wonderful youth that are game changers eh, in the nation and internationally. Uh, I want to believe, you know, because you are children of God, right? You know, you will make an impact in whatever you lay your hands upon in the mighty name of Jesus. You will make a difference. You will not just be youth, but you will be youth, eh? you know, of a, you know, I mean, of great and greatest impact in your generation. It's time that we've been looking at the newspapers internationally and we've seen, you know, the likes of Clara, the likes of Ibuko, the likes of Pastor, Pastor Amushan, every one of us, right? You know, right? We've been reading about us, you know, people that are making difference in the world making back and making impact whether in nigeria or you know anywhere you are and uh, for us to be able to do this right you know we need to be deeply rooted i want to appreciate you know the youth right the, the, the leadership of the youth uh for that topic deeply rooted it's about everything right we must uh, there must be a difference between ourselves and the people that are not children of god there must be a difference you understand right when people are struggling and all those stuff, everybody is struggling one way or the other but our own because we are in christ and christ in is, is in us definitely there must be a difference we'll not be struggling like others because you know the bible tells us you know that we are you know wonderfully made and we need to start to believe this if you have not been believing the ball we need to know that we are carefully and uh, you know wonderfully made someone will say that ah you know alone she over time when he was creating us you know, understand what i'm talking about right so we are not just you know we say commoners we're not commoners you understand you know so we need to possess our possession and that is what is lacking you know in the christianity of today of course some people are making difference you know i'm not saying i'm just talking generally that but we need to do more we need to see more christians making impact and let me tell you again the best way to be able to accomplish this if you are really 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 deeply rooted if you are deeply rooted it will affect everything you understand right is it in career you need to be deeply rooted so that your career will be positively impacted. Is it in relationship? You need to be deeply rooted so that your relationship will be positively impacted. Uh, Ibuku, what am I seeing? Something is happening here. Ibuku. Please, this thing is uh, okay. Anyway, you can remove this your time watch. Oh, Ibuku, please remove this. Ah, thank you very much. Right. So, in our career, in relationships, you understand, we need to be deeply rooted. And as children of God, we need to be deeply rooted in the, our faith. Uh, in christ jesus and what does it mean to be deeply rooted we are children of god and i know that uh, you know we read the word of god and definitely the spirit of god will minister more to us right but in the next uh, few minutes let's just go through some of these slides please so um okay good you are the one sharing this slide for me so please watch very well so then colossians 2 6 to 7 
that were the, 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 these are the biases I was given. Uh, this one and the next one. So then, just as you receive Christ Jesus as our Lord, continue to live your lives in Him, rooted and built up in Him, strengthened in the faith as you were taught, and overflowing with thankfulness. Let's go through it again, those dead. Oh, please, let's go through it again. So then, just as you received Christ, Jesus as Lord, continue to live your lives in Him, rooted and built up in Him, strengthened in the faith as we are taught and overflowing with thankfulness. Let me ask some questions from anyone and all of us. Number one, right? Do we, right, as we have accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, do we really live eh, continuously our lives in Him? You know, we are talking of deeply rooted. That is to say, you know, it is not just uh, on the periphery basis that people will call it. We need to do more. We need to be deeply rooted in our relationship with Christ, right? And be built up in Him and be strengthened in the faith. Let me tell you, many things happen that challenges our faith, right? I'm talking of in the in the physical in the physical terms. Things happen every day that I can tell you. I will share one or two examples as uh, uh, this uh, lecture, I mean, this uh, teaching is going on. As we are taught and overflowing with thankfulness. Let me tell you, God wants us to be thankful, right? It's just like even our earthly people, parents, you know, bosses in the office, friends, you know, if they do something for you, there's a kind of way for they confer on you. Or something that uh, one way or the other, they just give you something, they just bless you. Be thankful. You understand? That's one of the problems that some of us that we have. We are never thankful. We are never grateful. We are never appreciative. We are only by twist. There's nothing wrong in asking for more. But let me tell you, those who will get more are the people that are thankful. Even, you know, uh, for the little you know, that uh, they were able to get, whether from the Almighty, whether from even people, you understand, right? Whether from bosses in the office, you have a race in the office, some people will join a looter against the organization, rather than saying, oh, even the little that they have given us, let's even appreciate it first, you understand, before we can now press for more. We need to be strategic, you know, especially as we are coming up in life. We are talking of in our career. We are talking of in our relationship. Thankfulness, I can tell you, is uh, something that, you know, you cannot do without. Please, the next slide. Thankfulness can raise you, the feelings of gratitude. The next slide, please. I don't have it here. Right. Thriving in career. I mean, okay. John 4, 24. That's another one. God is spirit. And his worshippers must worship in the spirit and the truth john 4 24 you gave me that one again for us to be deeply rooted we must have this in mind that god is not a man that god is spirit you understand it's not a physical being is spirit and every one of us when we worship we must worship him in truth eh? and uh, in spirit for us to be deeply rooted you understand we must adopt it we must note this and adopt this in our relationship with the Almighty. You are relating with God. You are relating with spirit being. Thank you uh, for the next slide. Thriving in our career. Let me give you a quote by Steve Jobs. You know what he said? Which is very, very true. In fact, before I say it, just think about it. Read that thing and see whether this thing that uh, Job said actually uh, is making any sense or not. Your work, according to Steve Jobs, is going to fill a large part of your life. Your work is going to fill a large part of your life. Let me tell you, personally, myself, I've started banking, my banking career to the glory of God at the age of, if I, let me say, my 17th birthday. Right, Nigeria was good in those days. It will be better in Jesus' name. My 17th birthday, 17th, I'm saying, met me, 
right? Eh? As a banker, my 17th birthday. It was uh, in those days, we were not used, right? We were not used to uh, what is happening today, casualization and all those things. Definitely, you know, at the time I started my banking career, never, there was never anything like casualization, right? You know, when you graduate from the secondary school, and your school search result is okay or o n d when you are i mean you you graduated from the polytechnic or from the university you understand the truth is that eh, you can use any of these certificates you understand to get job and when you get your job never anything like casual it was a normal job you know and you now grow with it right so imagine someone right that started a, a banking career you know at 17 years right so and day-to-day -day banking took me decades minimum of three decades plus that i was going to work every day and you know and all those things so your work is going to fill a large part of your life and the only way to be truly satisfied is to do what you believe is great work look at what i said there choice of career people manage and struggle sometimes eh? Through their career due to wrong choices from the beginning being deeply rooted can provide an answer to this we need god's guidance in this strategic aspect of our life but often the truth is that we neglect this when we want to choose our career how many people actually go to god you understand in choosing our career most of us it's just like one guy uh, i know you know nelsiru erufai he wrote a book he said accidental civil servants you understand right that was you know he was trying to say he joined you know the civil service by accident what are we talking about right that's what many of us we you know just joined by accident so you are coming into a career that will shape your life whether you like it or not you know and then you got into it wrongly one way or the other and you remain in it you understand whereas this work according to steve job is going to fill a large part of your life and the only way to be truly satisfied is to do what you believe is great work right but many people they join the work they don't want to leave because of the pay they murmur all through their career they are unhappy when they get to work you understand they are unhappy when they come back home like this if it's a man it is the woman that will suffer because of the complaint if it's a woman it is the man that will suffer you understand so in what you are talking about your career is now affecting and eh, your own your relationship next slide please right but being deeply rooted can provide us and what are we talking about what are the reasons for this right choice of uh, you know career wrong career and things like that picking whatever comes on your way usually we look at the economy we say beggar has no choice right beggar has no choice but the question i'm asking this evening this great youth uh are you a beggar do you see yourself as a beggar as a man thinking right so he is as a woman thinking so she is right so when people say beggar has no choice anything that comes away i take it are you a beggar or are you a child of the most high whatever will happen to you in life i can tell you you must make a distinction between this whether you're a beggar you understand and you just be taking crumbs that fall from the table you understand or you go eh, and you possess your possession that i'm fearfully made i'm wonderfully made i belong to god jesus is in me you understand that is what we are talking about you are fearfully made do you see yourself like that you are wonderfully made do you see yourself like that you know if you see yourself as a fearfully and a wonderfully made child of god a great specimen a great species you understand right definitely that is exactly what will be pursuing you that is what will be backing you up your faith your belief the way you see yourself thank you the next career uh, the next uh, slide please the next slide the next slide please who is there right thriving in relationships look at quote uh, this quote tony robbins some of us you know maybe we have read about uh, uh, tony robbins and some of his books right please someone ayomiku ayomiku please uh, mute yourself 
The quality of your life is in direct proportion to the quality of your relationship, according to Tony Robbins. According to Tony Robbins, the quality of your life is in direct proportion to the quality of your relationship. And let me tell you, what are these relationships we are talking about? We are talking about one marital relationship. That's why it is important, right? You must not eh, be unequally yoked. You understand? You must not be unequally yoked. You understand? What am I talking about? It's not even eh, number one, eh, even in the spiritual alone. Not only that, look at it. You understand? Are you people that uh, you can get together? Are you really friends before you talk about marriage? You understand? Right. All these things, I mean, can really influence, you know, because when you're talking of a, of a marital partner, a marriage partner, you know, your partner, he's a partner for life, especially as children of God. Right? People outside can divorce and remarry, divorce, remarry, and whatever. I've even seen, I read about someone recently, right, they divorced, eh? You know, each person departed, you know, after some years, you know that kind of thing. I think they remarried here and there. After some time, they came back again. Can you imagine that? You know, what are we talking about? These things are not expected of Christians. You don't change your wife or your husband like a rapper, right? So the quality of your life is in direct proportion to the quality of your life. So you, at the time you are choosing, you understand, you must know eh, whether this person meets up, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, I mean, there's a way you feel, there's a way, there's something that you want, you understand, right? Not that one will be setting too high standard, but what are we talking about, right? Is that we must have some kind of relationship that must be intimate. I'm talking of not uh, the kind of uh, intimate in the world. I'm talking of, I mean, you know, spiritual intimacy, and I'm talking of emotional intimacy. You must be able to get along in life. Network, what kind of people are you networking with? It's the thing that can affect your life, you know, positively or negatively. Right. Uh, in Yoruba, they will say, Aguton, Toba Bajari, Oma Jegbe. You understand? For some of us that don't understand this thing very well. Right. So, what are we talking about? Right. You know, you must uh, the network. Who are the people in your network? Who are the people you understand that uh, you are actually, uh, I mean, you, you get along with in life outside your home, right? At work, you know, what who are your colleagues? How do you get along with them? You understand that there are bad colleagues, bad influencers, and there are positive colleagues, positive influencers. Who do you choose? You understand all these things will affect eh, your relationship. Again, eh, the family also, you understand, the friends, all these things. You can have quality people high quality people you can have bad people in everything whether in marriage whether you know professional network whether colleagues whether family whether friends you understand the quality of your life is in direct proportion to the quality of your relationship so have this in mind and they choose wisely choose wisely choose wisely thank you the next slide the next slide right pet is taking the first step that's another thing of course we all know I want to believe that many of us here, we are Christians, if not all, you understand, right? You know, many of us know what the Bible says about faith and compare it with what Martin Luther King Jr., right? He said, faith is taking the first step, even when you don't see the old dear case. Faith is taking the first step when you don't even see the old dear case. Something happened to me just about a week ago. We were having... Uh, I mean, the plan, right? We wanted to do this program, right? We wanted to do this program. Um, it's a summit, the program, uh, a summit, a conference of uh, people in the microfinance and fintech categories, right? So we did this, we were having a plan, but eventually we did not see much interest. We postponed it. When we postponed it, you know, then holidays came in, Easter came in, uh, the Muslim holiday came in and whatever you understand, and you know, the enthusiasm to even market and all those things, eh? You know, was not really there, right? So, at a point in time, you know, we now say, What do we do? We have postponed this thing the first time, second time, you understand, you know, we have, I mean, we have postponed it the first time, okay, making two times, eh? The first time we have given the date to the people, now we have given another date to the people, 
So do we now say again, we want to move this thing forward? I can tell you, I was restless. What do we say if we postpone this thing again? But already, you know, we have booked a hall. You understand? We have booked a hall that can accommodate a lot of people. And now, I will call my colleagues. How many do we have that have registered? They will say 15. They will say 20. I say, ah. In about a week, we are going to have this program. We cannot bring 20 when we have people that are dignitaries. And what, what are we just talk just not to waste your time, right? This is where faith comes in, right? I thought about it uh, at a point in time. This was practical. I asked my colleagues, I said, look, you guys, if we have to run this course, the only thing that can bail us out eh, was a uh, miracle. And I was asking them, what can bail us out? At any point that they will say miracle. Do we go ahead and whatever? Everybody were optimistic, said, let's go ahead. I can tell you, eventually, we went ahead with the planning of the program and all those things. By Saturday, right? Before Saturday, only about 40 registered, right? We rented the hall that can accommodate a lot of people. By Saturday, we could not believe what we saw. Only one institution brought 14 people, 14. Another institution brought eight people. Can you imagine? And all those things, right? You can see a lot. I mean, it was amazing. Because, you know, and I asked the people again, what is the result of this? What happened to this? Why this? And whatever. Everybody knew that. Oh, right. We said we wanted a miracle. And that is exactly what we had. What are we talking? At a point in time, right? As Christians, you must be able to exercise faith. Just like Martin Luther King. We were taking the first step when we were taking the program, when we were planning this. We were taking that step when we don't even know, when we cannot even see the whole staircase. And that's his faith. If you are waiting for you to see the end of the staircase, I can tell you, you may eventually not be able to achieve anything. Please move forward. We can apply this in everything. In our relationship, we can apply this. In everything that we do in our career, we can apply this. Now, I mean, look at it. In entrepreneurship and innovation, success and even career. I won't put career there. Maybe I made a mistake when I was changing it. Right? Please, the next slide. The next slide you have removed it again please quickly right okay good aha uh -huh. okay good uh, go back to that last slide that's go back to that last slide good success as password success as password and i'm not joking it has keys that you must use to unlock the hidden secrets and when you fail to use the right keys the right codes or password no matter where you are our senior pastor the district of Asia, taught this thing also that must be nothing less than 10 years ago he demonstrated that you know key key you use key to unlock to unlock to unlock secrets you understand the teaching that must be nothing less than a decade ago so success has password uh, it has keys that you must use to unlock the hidden secret. And when you fail to use the right keys, the cause or password, no matter where you are, that is one thing I want to let you know. As youth, tendency for everybody to jackpot. If you don't jackpot, you are not fulfilled. Nothing like that. I can tell you, I still know some youths that are doing what, that are thriving in this country. If you have an opportunity to jackpot, of course, you know, see the other life, see everything and whatever. It can even make you wiser. Wonderful. Pursue it. But I'm telling you, a monkey in Nigeria cannot be a lion in America. Do you understand? It is not possible. When if a monkey anywhere the monkey is, it will remain a monkey. Right? So even if you get back to US, Canada, UK, South Africa, Germany, or any foreign country, it may not make any difference if you don't carry the right keys with you. If you don't carry the right keys with you, if you had a bad relationship, you understand? In Nigeria, yeah, people avoid you because they know that definitely you guys, I mean, they have tagged you because of the fact that you don't behave well. You don't relate to people well. I'm telling you, by the time, by the time eh, you go out there, you won't believe it. If you don't change that, it will be the same thing, right? If you are bad in career, you understand, maybe you are not a hardworking person, all those things and whatever, and, and you are not innovative, you know, that kind of thing. You, I can tell you, if you go anywhere, 
it will grow. So the best thing eh, is to recognize eh, you know that success has password. Please move on. Please move on. Success has password. Please move on. Move on. Therefore, what are the keys to success in career, in entrepreneurship, in innovation? Number one, I'm just thinking about two or three, I think. Number one, identify your capability. Identify your capability. It's unfortunate, you know, that a lot of people don't believe that they, even, they are capable of doing anything. People, they, it, uh, let me tell you, right, Nigeria, Oda, now, I've been hearing this thing since when I was a young person, since when I was a, 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 in the primary school. Oh, this country is not good. That's the same thing. So let me tell you, it's a relative thing. Nigeria is not good, it's a relative thing. You understand, right? The thing you have to do is to identify your capability. It is not Nigeria that will settle anybody's problem. You understand? It is you that will create the environment that you want. It is you that we create the Nigeria that you want. I mean it with all sense of responsibility, decency, and the fear of God. Right. God has deposited eh, things in us that can make us to excel in life, that can make us to thrive in our career, that can make us to thrive in entrepreneurship, in innovation. I can tell you, all of us, we are capable of being one thing or the other. The only thing is that, do you know what eh, is in your hand? Have you been able to identify it? Do you know what are, you are capable of doing? What's in your hand? And what are you capable of doing? Another question is that, are you maximizing your potentials? Right. Are you maximizing your potentials? There will always be constraints or obstacle on your way to success. That is why we are resilience comes in. Then before going to resilience, let me go to that question again. Right. Are you maximizing your potential? Do you know what is in your hand? Can you identify your capability? Let me tell you. Um, but some of us may be used to something like talent aunt, all those kind of things and whatever, right? Me, right? If I have one kind of talent, amazing musical talent, I will never go there. I will never go there. Some people will now sit down and take charge of my destiny. Is that? Some people will now tell me, I should sing to them, right? I they the kind of audience that I'm singing to that I deserve? And some people will, you know, by the time they are singing, <laughs> so these people will laugh. Maybe you have seen some of this thing. And they will tell this person that, please, eh, you don't have a future. Go and do other things. And some people will weep and cry out of that kind of thing. I don't, it's because that person does not know his capability. I can't do, I can't go there. If I have me, I, I'm a talented person, or I recognize my talent, I would rather go and sing to people for free. I will sing in churches. I will sing outside. You understand? And, you know, I will sing without collecting cobble. One way or the other. One day, you know, someone will recognize me. God can use someone, right? So, but if you don't identify your capability, they will be in bus bulls. They will be sending you here and there on an era of no return. There will always be constraints to outside or your, or your way to source. That's another thing that you must know. There will always be constraints. There will always be obstacles on your way to success. But what do you see? Is this obstacles you understand that you see? Or you see beyond it? That is where resilience comes in. The next slide. I know, yes, I'm rounding up any time from now. The next slide, please. The hawk, maybe some of us will know hawk. We said resilience. The hawk fought the wind. You know oak. And it was broken. But the willow, another tree. Willows and hawk, they are tree. The oak for the wind that was broken. The window bent when it must and survived. Can you imagine? Right, there's no time to interpret some of these things. Right? But you're talking about resilience. The oak for the wind and was broken. But the willow, eh, another tree, you understand, bent when it must. Eh? If this thing is going like this, it will go like this. It will, you understand? Just to make sure that he said, uh, you know, he survived. That's resilience. Resilience is not about escaping your troubles. It's about facing them with courage and determination. Please move on. There's no time. Not about escaping your trouble. So, to, you know, to be resilient, you cultivate a growth mindset. The only limit to our realization of tomorrow. Look at it again. The only limit to, according to Franklin D. Roosevelt, right? 
the only limit to our realization of tomorrow will be our doubts of today. I can. Yes. Let me tell you, you can. I cannot. Right. Someone said something. Uh, things like this doesn't happen to people like us. Imagine that. Things like this, right, does not happen to people like us. Imagine, eh? Imagine that way, that kind of thing, the kind of things, right? The only limit to our action of tomorrow will be our doubt of today, right? If you say, I can, I know, I can, then you will. If you say, I may not, I cannot, and whatever, I can tell you, you can never. Embrace challenges as opportunity for growth and learning. There will always be challenges, right? I'm a risk manager. We say risk and opportunity come together. We understand. People say something is risky, they run away from risk. No! That's where the opportunities are. Build failures as temporary setback, not permanent defeat. You understand? If you want to be deeply rooted, these are the kind of things. Embrace challenges. When there are things people call failure, forget about it. I've seen people that made, eh, that, that, that failed in the secondary school and made, made first class eventually. So, make it temporary setback, you know. Develop adaptive coping me uh, mechanism. The greatest glory according to Nelson Mandela, is living, I mean, in living, lies not in never falling, but in rising every time we fall. Right. As a child of God, I pray none of us here will fail, none of us will fall. But what are we talking about? In relative terms, if there is any challenge, you understand, please eh, take it, you know, and rise up. Identify healthy coping mechanism to manage stress and adversity. Let me tell you, there are too many things to worry you. In Nigeria, to worry any one of us, in especially Nigeria. But if you think Nigeria is the only one that's full of stress, go to other places and you see that, in fact, some other places can be more stressful than Nigeria. I've seen people that went over there and came back. I can tell you, you understand. Stay flexible and open to new ways of problem solving. Let me tell you, if you are a problem solver, you continue to eat in this country. You continue to eat in this country. Identify something. Right. Identify your capability. Identify what you can contribute to, uh, contribute to the world. Identify your understanding problem that you can solve for humanity. Identify, you know, I mean, a lot of problems. In fact, look at it. Even hunger. People are, I mean, people continue to be hungry. You understand? Go into food in any form. Food processing, food production, farming, this and that and whatever. There is no way, right, you will not make yours. You know that kind of thing. Especially if you brand it and uh, you innovate. Please move on, move on, move on, move on, move on. Life, that's what people don't know. Doesn't get easier or more forgiving. I told you from my primary school, I've been hearing Nigeria or da, Nigeria or da. Nigeria is not good. When will Nigeria be good? I was young, I'm still young, you understand. Maybe when I'm old, maybe Nigeria will be good. Life does not get easier or more forgiving, but we get stronger and more resilient, according to Steve. Maraboli. And that's what we are talking about. In the west of change, look at this. Right. Change. Eh? We find our true direction. That's another quote. Any useful quote that can help us. You understand? In the west of change, eh? we find our true direction. Anything there's a change like this, you, you, you fail with it. And all those things. Let me tell you, do you know eh, the Naira that had the problem recently and whatever? Do you know how many, some people, right? That made millions while others are lamenting, you know, complaining, lamenting. Do you know some people manipulated the system? They say, Ah, this is an opportunity. When you see it as risk and whatever, people, you know, join and whatever. And eventually, some of them, eh, they were able to even benefit from that thing. What are we talking about? All these things, eh, you know, we continue. The only thing is that what eh, can you do? You understand to take advantage of situation. We often take this for granted especially as children of God, prayer and meditation, right? Oh, well, look at you. All of you now, you are in the working class. You know, if you're not careful, you won't have time for prayer. You won't have time for meditation at all. I can tell you, but honestly, to be duply rooted, I can tell you, you need this. You don't just be struggling. It's not about struggling and struggling and struggling. You understand? Find little time. Some of us will enter maybe BRT and whatever, you know, I mean, along the line, you can do some kind of meditation rather than, you know, and the challenge nowadays eh, is the phone we are carrying. We carry that phone as we are waking up by five o'clock, right? You know, till the end of the day, even at work at times, we disturb ourselves. 
like just study the scriptures. We take this thing for granted. These are the things that we need. You understand? We need to cultivate this. Go back to this old time religious practice. It worked for our forefathers. I can tell you it continues to work. Fellowshipping with like minded individuals, right? In the world, we call it networking, networking, networking. In the church, we can also network very well with like minded individuals and, uh, you know, with prospect and a lot of things. Outside, you know, network, network. And service, hey, let me tell you some people don't even have any job. Do you know what they did? They just started volunteer something. They started, you know, volunteer, volunteer work, volunteer work. And God lifted them from that volunteer work. You understand, you go for an interview, you have been there for three years doing nothing. Someone just entered this volunteer something. He just started, he started it. And by the time eh, he puts it in the CV, by the time he goes for an interview, you eh, that has not done anything, what have you been doing? I didn't get a job. You can never get a job over someone that is tested and trusted. Do some service and provide some kind of act of kindness. All these things, eh, they work. We are talking of right cultivating spiritual youth let me tell you something i cannot continue to go like because of time but let me tell you go and do these things right if you're able to do this i can tell you right you will give testimonies thank you very much god bless you wow 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 what a night has been awesome Thank you, sir. Well done, well done, well done, sir. Thank you so much. So much insight tonight. Uh, that has been a wonderful time. Thank Abis, you. You have any questions? All your hands. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. God bless Thank you. So, question and answer. Thank you. Anyway, if you have questions, though, our time is fast spent, but we have to take questions. So, anybody, if you have questions, please just um, please raise your hands and let's have the question. Does anybody have question? Question is another opportunity to get together. Thank you, Tela Energy. Thank you, Anu. Thank you, everyone. Right. So, question, Hi. question, question. Be free. You understand? You know, I'm your brother. I'm your colleague. I'm your friend. You understand? Yes. You know, I'm a youth like yourself. So, <laughs> let's say, uh, let, 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 let's, let's be together. You know, it's a great time for us to be able to uh, uh, learn one or two things. I can also learn from you. I can tell you. Right. So, question time, please. Okay, so I want to ask a question. To, That's for like your person. All right, uh, you were uh, you spoke about um, you know like Steve, Steve Jobs when he said um, accidental civil servants that most people they keep they just go they just got into the work because it's not what they want to do or what they like to do. Yeah, but you know there are some people that it's not like they don't even like what they like they want they are doing. It's um, probably their passion or what they love to do, but um, due to maybe the kind of boss they have or the kind of colleagues or things like that while on the job, the joy or the motivation of going to work is not there at times. It's not like it's not your passion or what you wanted to do initially. It's not accidental. Do you understand? Uh, yeah. But because of some challenges along the way or the kind of people you now relate to or the relationship you find yourself at that workplace, you start having a kind of um, maybe, um, I don't know, the camera to use now like no the passion for the job is not come is not there again so how do you deal with that kind of situation sir okay thank you very much this what you are saying is um something that uh, we see every day i can tell you it's not something new at all right it's something that we see every day i mean uh, if i tell you the challenges i had you know uh, at work right in my career i can tell you right the one thing is that when I was facing uh, some of these challenges, my wife knows this. And uh, when my children were growing, you know, some of them, maybe uh, the first, you know, I mean, was able to understand one of these things, right? But the thing is that when these things were happening, I personally, I didn't take it eh, on my head. Abi, is it? I can say. Uh, I, I didn't take it to heart. There is a politician that uh, normally says, I give room uh, for people to make mistakes. I give people, I mean, I give room for people to, to just, let me just say, fumble, right? If you are expecting that as your mom loves you, as your dad loves you, as your wife or husband, you understand, if you are married, loves you, as your siblings love you, that in the working place, 
You understand that they will love you like that. Pow, 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 pow. You will just stress yourself. You understand? A working place eh, is a place of politics. You understand? Politics. Competition, you know, people want to, you know, I mean, compete. I mean, you are someone out of your seven of you, only one will be promoted. So people can start to do a lot of things without being political. You understand? But you know, all those times that I was facing my own challenges, I was striving. Why? I, what was I doing? I, I, I'm a chartered banker, you understand, by the grace of God. And, uh, you know, I'm talking of these challenges that I was talking about, eh? they are in the banking industry. But those challenges made me stronger. Do you know, at the point in time, I just started, eh? um, I, 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 I had a product that I introduced. What do I mean by the product? Right? I look around eh, for a solution that I can use eh, in the office to earn respect. I had a passion. I've always had a passion for teaching. You understand? And I know many of my banker colleagues, they are not chattered. You understand? Many, majority. You understand? Right? The fact that, okay, all of us are working in the bank. So, as a chartered banker, I now started, you know, writing about banking and sending it on the intranet do you know even my my colleague my senior colleague my boss that didn't like me he wanted to identify all of them you will not believe it they were identifying with me they love to identify with me because i was not teaching only a branch i was teaching the old bank you understand i would have said at the point in time i look at it eh? people are so political that they can they can I was talking to my wife about some days ago, like just yesterday. People can be funny. Do you know? Eh? Some people will go to each other's house. Eh? Always they go to the boss's house. There's nothing wrong with that. To come and talk about you, you understand that. I was not interested in all those politics. I was not playing with them. Me, I am a professional. I was behaving like a professional. I was looking for solution. Eh? What I can do and what I can do and whatever. And eventually, I succeeded. I became to the glory of God eh, a master over all of this, including my boss. What are we talking about? This thing you are talking about is normal. The only thing is that be focused as a professional, you understand. It is this job that binds you together, right? If anybody, you know, is there, don't don't let them, don't, don't even expect anything from them. Don't expect too much from them. Let them commit their mistakes. I have a boss that will say that, oh, he give from for people to be mad. Oh, my boy, I can't, I, he will just say that, my boy, yeah, we shall. You understand? When the person wants to fumble, I say, oh, just see, oh. You know, give people room to be mad. Don't pay attention to all those things. There are always brighter and better aspects of work, you understand. There are a lot of colleagues at work that you can lie with. There are things that you can do that you can engage, engage yourself. Don't do petty policies. And when people, you know, are doing it, please, eh? Be far from them and be focused, you understand. When people, if you are free, take more responsibilities. You understand? This uh, this boss that we're talking about will eventually respect you, right? You know, right. contribute significantly. Mm -hmm. I, yes, contribute significant. I did it and it helped me. I can tell you, at the point in time, to the glory of God, right? Eh? I became a solution provider to the banking, uh, to, 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 the, to the bank where I was working. That the managing director and all of them, eh, they started calling me professor. Maybe for one of you, some of you were hard, oh, prof, prof. They started calling me professor from my working place because I became professorial to the glory of God. Because I was, you know, I mean, the challenge that they were having, banking operation, and I will write about banking operation, I will post it, I will send case studies, and all those things, and, we, and I will give them the answer. I, imagine, I became an in-house in, in lecturer. Nobody taught me how to do it. I just to do it. I just did it myself. And rather than playing petty politics, I became a. They recognize me to today as one of the top professional in the industry to the glory of God. So petty politics, it will always happen. No, if you think it will not happen, forget about it. They are not your church member. They are your colleagues, and you can be political. So what do I do? You know, you behave eh, professionally and ignore all this kind of pettiness. Let them know you don't have time for this. And before you know it, they will see you. You understand, and those who are talking at your back, then they will come eventually to embrace you if you put in uh, some kind of professionalism. But what I see is that in offices, many of us are not professional. You can change it from this moment. Thank you very much. God bless you.
Wow, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, sir. I really appreciate it. Let's celebrate our daddy. Let's really, really, let's celebrate him. Let's just send those emojis. Thank you, sir. We appreciate you so much. So much insight tonight. Thank so much you. Thank you, thank you, Kara. Thank you, Shola. Thank you, Jude. Thank you, everyone. Let's say we love you, daddy. Oh, I love you, love you too. Daddy. Thank you. I love you, too. Thank you so much. Thank God bless you. God Amen. bless every one of you. See you and meet you at the top. Amen. You will be deeply rooted and you will make a significant difference. Thank you for this opportunity. Once again, God bless you. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, daddy. We appreciate this. Good night. Thank you, night. sir. Thank you, sir. Bye-bye. All right, all right, all right. That's been wonderful, been wonderful indeed. All uh, right, about now, we'll be moving to our next section. We have a second section for the night, and um, how our wonderful mommy is on the call. Who will, um, she will be starting right about now. In fact, we are behind schedule, so I'll just read. I'll read her profile, and um, she will start the section. Um, it's you know, it's something we are we are interested in, and we've been looking forward to. And I'm sure we get the best tonight. Um, so we have another privilege to uh, privilege tonight to be impacted by you. Know, she's one of a kind. For me, she's actually a mother indeed, and she's personally dear to me. So I will read her profile, like I said, and she will go ahead. Uh, Gwemisola Bilal is internally motivated, multi-skilled, and clearly focused professional. With strong communication skills, a human resource professional with over 20 years of experience, she is an associate member of the Chartered Institute of Personnel Management of Nigeria, that's CIPM, with other certifications in learning and development, meditation, mediation, and conflict resolution. Prior to her joining the Redison Hotel Group in 2018, she worked with Industrial General, Industrial General Insurance PLC, that's IGI, Dia Fati Milane and Co., and Sam Kilo Engineering. Mr. Bilau is a leader with 360 degrees uniqueness. She's dedicated to creating, living, and serving with total commitment to value-based relationships and leadership. She's a Christian. She's married to one man and blessed with two children. She is also a mentor to many. With Jesus' joy, I want us to celebrate and make welcome our very own mommy, Mr. Bilau. Please let's celebrate our mommy. Mommy Bilau, you are welcome, ma. Good evening, Ma. You're welcome. Hello, Ma. She, can she hear me? Mommy Bilal. I think she's I saw on the call earlier. Yeah, she's still on the call. I just I just hold on. She's probably having issues with that mic or something. Hello, Ma. I think she's having a network problem because she's showing that she's unmuted. Yeah, she's unmuted and she's online. It's... Yeah. Maybe, yeah, maybe, maybe she should log out and log in back. If you can hear, you can please log out and log in back. Should be network issues. Yes. Okay, she's still on the call. Yes. Okay. Can somebody just start? Okay. Let me 
just try to reach out. Please let's stay on the call. She'll be back shortly. I'm sure she's trying to work on her too. Yes, yes. She has gone offline. I'm sure she's she will log in back shortly. So um can just um keep sipping in what we've learned so far during the course of um during the course of this and before section. Anyway, just to occupy uh, until uh, baby shows up. I think she has a network challenge. Yes, sir. I think she has a network challenge. So let's just, uh, you know, we can be chatting. I mean, we can be, if there are issues, you know, um, it's a great platform. And I want, uh, you know, to comment the use of uh, today. Right. Um, and uh, please let this thing kind of uh, let this kind of conversation let it continue we need more of this you understand we need more of this conversation thank god we are 20 now that have joined so far the next time we are going to do is let's have 100 people it is possible you understand we need more as we are doing more it will continue to grow a lot of things are happening you know outside and i can tell you you know we have a lot of information that can, we can share on platforms like this right so i want to commend you uh once again you understand so let's uh, keep the conversation flowing right we need to thrive in our career in our relationships you know we need to thrive in business you know in entrepreneurship innovation we can we have been reading about others others you know see people that we are reading about i mean i would just say hey one day eh? in my church my church will produce an outstanding woman and my church is producing i know some of you will know this guy uh, the general overseer's son right you know that guy in fact he, he, he has hit it let me just say in technology you know there are a lot of silent people in the church that are doing wonderfully well let's have more let's let's have more let our districts let be celebrated in the international world let people read the bath horse. Ah, this person was in Jack on the estate to uh, church. Now eh, he's in California and he's doing exploits. You understand? He's in Cincinnati, he's doing exploits. Oh, this person, you can imagine, right? He, he's in the, uh, I mean, uh, what do you call it? In UK, doing exploits. He's in Canada, he's in Australia. You understand, right? All these things are possible. He's in Nigeria and he's doing wonderfully well. Let's have let's be sharing testimonies let's be sharing you know information 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 is something that can really really move us forward right best practices what are people doing what are their strategies what are they doing that can make them that have made them to be what they are why are we celebrating these people and all those stuff you understand right let's believe in ourselves let me give you a testimony i hope people are listening i mean Yes, are Thank you very much. Let me give you, a, a, I mean, a testimony, a not a testimony per se, but you know, just uh, practical examples of uh, people. Um, every one of us knows this uh, uh, Tony Elumelu. You understand? Tony Elumelu, um, do you know if that guy has been a person that just took no eh, for an answer and he just uh, he didn't believe in, in himself, that guy will never you won't even know about him just like any employee or prospective employee the guy eh, i think he has a i don't know whether he taught class uh, something you know i don't know but the minimum that they were looking for in that bank as of today i mean as at that time that bank was a uh, all straight trust bank and many of all, you we won't know it because eventually the bank could not meet up with the capitalization uh, of uh, the government of the central bank. And so the bank, you know, eventually uh, surrendered their license. They are no more in the system. But that was the bank that actually lifted Tony Elumelu. 
right? So that time, Tony had eh, he didn't have the requirement. They wanted minimum of first class or two one to let you know that this issue of first class it is that today. Imagine Tony Lumelu is sixty plus now, right? And when he was looking for a job in his twenties, imagine these banks were looking for first class or two one. Can you imagine that? So that thing has, I mean, it's not just today that you have seen that. So Tony did not have first class. He didn't have two one. I think he had third class or pass. I don't know. You know that kind of thing. Or maybe two two. I don't think he had two two anyway. But I'm not too sure. But he didn't have the requirement that he wanted. So normally, because he did not have, the next thing was just leave. But Tony persisted. One way or the other, the guy demanded to see the managing director. Can you imagine an insult, a job a seeker, a, 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 that kind of thing at that level? You at the interview level, they said they don't want to because it didn't make up the minimum, and they said you know you want. And along the line, you understand, right? As fair to have it, this guy was allowed. Eh? Something somewhere, somewhere, he was linked and he was uh, able to see the managing director, a bit me Banigo. That's the name of the guy, the founder of the bank. You understand? And the bank, the guy just listening to this guy. You know, I can do it. That's the thing. You must be confident. You know, there's one thing in Yoruba. Are you there? Hello, sir. Can you hear me, sir? I'm yelling you. I think she's back, sir. Sir? Oh, me, the loud back, sir. Oh, GB, are you there? GB, are you there? For me, did you say GB is back? Yeah, she's on the call, but maybe she's still having issues with the. Okay, 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 you understand. Oh, uh, I was uh, saying, sorry, please drop a message on the chat for people to hear us now. Did you say what? No, she's talking to, to, okay. to her. Okay, she drop a message on the chat. Okay, okay, good. I was, uh, you know, I was uh, flowing with something anyway, about uh, I don't know where I stopped, right? So, um, eventually. Uh -huh, I wanted to say something. I wanted to say uh, one kind of is it uh, a, a adage in Yoruba, right? That they will say "I le soro ni bere ori buruku." What do I mean, right? Funla your person, can you interpret it for me? "I le soro ni bere ori buruku." Funla, are you there? I'm here, sir. Yeah, please interpret that one for your colleagues. You know, you will be able to speak in their language. I can't. Oh yeah, "I le soro." <laughs> I yeah. sorry, yeah. I, if we cannot talk, it's the beginning of a uh, maybe unfortunate. Exactly, you got it. You cannot even talk. God has given you mouth. You cannot talk. You have lost confidence in yourself, and people see you and whatever. That did not happen to Tony. Sure Tony Elubelu decided, right? And eventually, he was able to see the MD to meet the founder of the bank, the owner, the MD. And he was able to tell that man, I can do it. It's not about certificates. Give me a chance. Do you know? Eventually, they gave that guy eh, a chance. Okay, you know, the MD just said, we just overrode and said, okay, he did an override and said, let the guy continue. Let them let him be employed. That's why up to today, Tony Elumelu will always be grateful to a bit me Banigo. You understand, right? So the founder of uh, All State Trust Bank, Tony started. And before you do it, eh, by the age of four, uh, maybe 27 already, eh, he has been a, a bank manager and he was the best performing manager of that bank. The best performing manager of that bank. In about uh, maybe 30 something, right? Early 30s, oh, in early 30s, the guy eh, became, uh, I mean, one way or the other, right? He, uh, I mean, he just, uh, I mean, started something, and at that time, something he started a bank of his own. You understand, there? Eh? Um, that I think that was Crystal, Crystal Bank or something like that. You understand? The bank was in trouble, and they invited some people and what, and they bought over that Crystal Bank, right? They repackaged it, and before you know it again, they bought over Standard Trust Bank and all those things. And before you know it again, they used Standard Trust Bank to acquire UBA. And that is, uh, you know, what we know. I mean, as of today, he's the chairman of Transcorp and Audrey. he's a wealthy person. He's a multi-billionaire. If Tony had not spoken that time, 
if he had taken no for an answer, if he didn't believe in himself, I can tell you it can never be like this. So please, the youth of today, believe in just. I am telling you story, not I mean not a story, a reality, something that Tony Elumelu loves to talk about every time. I may not get that fact correct 100%, but that is the picture of what happened to Tony. That kind of thing. And as of today, can you imagine? Because eh, it's like uh, speaking your way to success, right? I can do it. Many of us, you know, when the society says, eh, we cannot do it. And that's exactly what happened. The society says, you know, we cannot do it. You understand? And we resign to faith. No, let there be a change. And that is why I love this topic. Eh? Deeply rooted. Whatever happened in the physical, there is a root in the spiritual. You understand? Let the foundation, let it be sure in Christ Jesus. Eh? <laughs> yes, eh? I can do all things. Look at that. The Bible tells us, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Let me tell you, let it be your watchword. Let it be your password. Let it be your daily mantra. You understand? You know, let this be something that you continue to chew. You understand? You continue to chew it. You continue to speak about it. Let it form part of your being. I can do all things. Is it in career? I can do all things. In the spiritual, I can do all things. In entrepreneurship, I can do all things. You know, let it, let it be eh, something that is part of you. And I can tell you, you understand, right? That's how to separate men from boys. That's how to separate girls, you know, from women. That kind of thing. That I can and I cannot, you know. Please, let's possess our possession. Do you know? What it means then eh, to say, I am a child of the most high, I am a child of God. Greater is he that is in me. You understand? Can I hear us? Yes. 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 No. Has she come? I'm trying to be sure she's she's on she's on the call, but I'm not sure she can hear us. So. Ah, which call? Oh, Bilal, can you hear us? Hello, ma. She still can't hear us. Yeah, please go ahead, sir. You understand? So, right? So, from I can't, let our language be I can. You understand? That's what we are talking about, right? Let's, let's you know, our faith, let it be deeply rooted. Those who believe, eh? You know, you want to benefit from him. The Bible say, eh, you must be aware, you must believe that he is, you understand, right? And he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. You understand? All these things are very, very important things, right? Have a conversation with yourself. Let your word, yeah, believe in God. Believe in God. Believe in him. You understand? Don't argue with your creator. You know, we are more, uh, we are, we are, uh, we are, pot, I mean, we are clay. He is the potter. You understand? He's the potter. Eh? We are clay. He can do anything with us. You understand? Right? The clay cannot dictate, you understand, to the potter how he will shape on it. He cannot dictate. You can only ask for mercy. But when you ask for mercy from the Almighty, you understand, when you believe in the word, when you are deeply rooted eh, in Christ Jesus, I'm telling you, eh, you understand, right? You are unstoppable. That's what the Bible says. And that's exactly what is happening, you understand, in the physical world. When you get eh, the spiritual life, when you get it right, you understand, definitely it will influence positively your, uh, your, your physical life. You understand? You will not be struggling like a, an unbeliever. You will not be struggling, eh? you understand? Eh, I mean, just, just like anybody. You understand that kind of thing, right? 
Uh, let, let me just say, via off a little. Maybe uh, some of you will have heard this song years ago. Uh, this guy, I'm not been yelling about him much now. This, this, uh, you know, he will say that, uh, don't let my own be like this. My Jackie, the Miri by any tone sin lorum, eh? Tiba tie, tongue gun, tongue gekumba. You know, some of you will understand what I'm trying to say, right? Someone that is serving God. You know, when you say Bataye Gekumba, you understand that something, you know, they see that even eh, the shoe yeah. over your daughter is uh, so, something, you know, it starts almost cut off. You know, his shoe yeah. is reducing, it's no more balanced and whatever. And the serving God, no, it should not be like that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yes. All right. Um, I think we should just, um, we've, in fact, we've learned so much. So I really appreciate and, um, uh, I think we should also. Well, somebody wants to. Uh, someone is raising his hand. Maybe he wants to ask a question, and I also want us to hear from everyone what we have learned so far from Paul. You are all the insights you've been, you know, giving us, and all that we have been learning so far from the lesson tonight. So, brother, you are raising your hand. You want to want to say something? Pastor Tessin. Am I audible? Yes, please. Okay, I'm okay, going to ask about um, our Christian values in the workplace. Because if you are to be honest, I don't know how many places that you say the of old Christian values like integrity, truthfulness, uh, punctuality, and the, and, the, and, and, the, and the likes. So in this our contemporary world now, uh, in Gen Z world, how is it? How possible is it? And I want to be, I want that to be very, very practical. How possible is it for you to to uphold your your integrity? For example, if you go for a, a salary negotiation, you will not be expected to state how much you earn in your former place because obviously your former place you use that as a basis to prorate your new salary. Maybe you have to come up with a another amount of money that you want to earn in your new place. Just give it an example. So, sir, maybe how do you address that, sir? Uh, Pastor, God bless you. <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> Hello. Well, Daddy, Mommy Bilal is yeah. here already. He's here, okay. Yeah. She will use my account. Okay. okay, okay, okay. So, um, let me step aside. You understand? You know, oh. but uh, that question that uh, Pastor Tosi, uh, Pastor Amushon, yes, uh, that question is very, very... Uh, is a practical question. And these are the kind of challenges that you will continue to see. You understand? You continue to see. At a point in time, at a point in time, I was just looking at it, especially in my career, you know, banking. You understand? In my banking career. Um, it's still very good for you that uh, even as young people, you understand, right? At a point in time, you get to a stage in your banking career that, oh, Right, uh, you see that one way or the other. If you don't, if you be praying that uh, you don't die at that time, you understand, right? Before you resign, you 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 are disengaged or you kind of uh, you know retire. If not, if you die there, it will be difficult to enter heaven because of uh, you know manipulation by the the big big bank owners that you are looking at here and there. A lot of them they manipulate. You understand, so. Right? So it's a very, very practical thing. But one thing is that, let me tell you, as a child of God, you know, when we were growing up, the kind of eh, relationship that we had with Christ is not the one you are having as of now. What are we talking about? Right? Some of us didn't even know Christ, you know, hardly in life. You understand? Of course, I knew Christ in my 20s, which is a wonderful thing for me, to the glory of God. But before uh, 22, 23, 24, 25, you understand that, whatever. But let me give an example of uh, one young lady in this our church, first Kwaja Konde. Uh, she's no more in our church. She's no more here anyway. She has married and whatever. She was working in GT Bank, right? And uh, at a point in time, when this lady was looking for a job, everybody was troubled. Ah, hey, Joe, sir, sir, please, I want a job. Eventually, she got a job in GT Bank. Sometimes she just left GT. 
she just left and when she left you need she didn't even tell anyone of course that her senior bankers and she just left so after some time we just continue to see her in the church and i don't know how i got to know that she has left i harassed her, i challenged her why did you have to leave that kind of job why it was not a contract though it was a normal job and the lady just said sir what they were telling me to do a youth like ourselves here what they were telling me to do sir honestly it's against my values and i refused to do it and when they persisted i resigned and i now said what do i tell you you know and that was the normal practice towards the end of the month the bank said they want to make profit you understand right so as a bank manager you don't want to be disgraced we call something npr monthly performance review you don't want to be disgraced you understand so the branch manager eh of that bank will now tell all the staff oh yeah they be debiting customers accounts don't be debiting it so that we can make profit what are you talking about if anybody if any one of them sees it eh then we do something about it but some of them will not see it at the mamuja that will be end you understand they will have made a profit that lady look at say eh is this what they are doing in banking something i cannot do it she stood her ground you understand i would nikke ogun something i've forgotten the uh, the sister is a medical doctor nikke whatever ogun something mm -hmm. right what are we talking about that lady left oh so but let me tell you if you stand for righteousness you understand them honestly god will back you up do you know that in the same bank some people had about nikke something right and they called her that nobody can intimidate you she has resigned though she has left totally i'm not talking of one two more three four five months six months old. and i can tell you i don't know as her to do but she got her job bank in gt bank eh and she was they, they, they posted her to another place and she continued her career there, career there look at what i'm talking about that's an example right someone that sad god eh and is stood by it and say no i will not compromise let me tell you i'm talking of something practical and again i can tell you again what i'm saying i know in the contemporary world is a difficult thing but one thing that's why it is better eh, for some of us after some time in your career you know honestly think about what you can do on your own think entrepreneurially you understand i can tell you do you know eh every one of us god has disposited one idea here and there you understand go to the, the, the corporate world go and learn but i can tell you you all of you as i'm talking this thing we are about how many years 16 we can produce 16 entrepreneurs here i can tell you different areas that will be adding value and that nobody will control will force you to compromise and all those stuff so definitely because sister gbemi has come you know i will stop here by special grace of god we meet again you understand but i can just tell you that it is a difficulty that it is achievable even in this contemporary world Thank you very much, Pastor. Thank you, and everybody. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much, Daddy. We are so grateful. Thank you, sir. More understand, more wisdom. So now I'll be handing over to our mommy. Please let's welcome our mommy. All right. I want to sincerely <laughs> apologize for the mix-up. I think I could hear you very well, but from my end, I think I have uh, issues with my microphone. So I want to start by apologizing. Can everybody hear me now? yes ma okay i'm sorry i'm sorry i'm sorry uh, we are tested it and it was working initially i could hear you loudly so we'll just try and see how best we can add value to ourselves so once again good evening everybody good evening okay. ma good okay, evening ma okay no. from 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 my end you know the topic is the same and i want to thank my dikinolainka for helping us to lay the foundation but from my end, what I've done is that I said in the introductory part of it that it is that there is no other relationship that is as important eh, as the one that we are we have or the one that we are supposed to have. You know, I want us to wait in that aspect, even for some of us that uh, maybe we are still uh, on the fence. The one that we have or we are supposed to have with our Creator and the purpose giver is the creator and the purpose giver and if you have a well-rooted and grounded relationship with him that is the pathway to thrive in anything that concerns you whether in your career whether in your relationship whether any other thing that you can think about so i want us to hold that with our left hand and ensure that we don't throw it away 
the most important relationship that you can ever think about is the one that you have with your creator. And if you are not there yet, please ensure that you get it right. So that at least thriving is made easy, you know, in every spheres of life. Just like, you know, the topic says, being deeply rooted, spiritually rooted. And I, I'll quickly run through the slides. And I, I trust God that in no time would be done. Spiritual roots. I said, this is the depth of your knowledge, commitments, and responses to the teaching of the Lord. This is the depth of your knowledge. What do you know? How committed are you to the things of God? And how are you responding to all of those things? Our Deacon read Colossians 6 from, I mean, Colossians 2 from 6 to 7. And I, I'm, I'm sure that we heard him when he read it. And now just as you accepted Christ as Lord, you must continue to follow him. Let your roots grow down into him and let your life be built on him. Then your faith will grow strong in the truth you were taught and you would overflow with thanks given. He has read it and basically that's the opening for me. You know, if you have your spiritual roots, you don't knowledge, have that at the back of your mind. You must, before you have, you talk about having a root, you must have the knowledge of who the person that you want to have roots with. If you want to plant anything, you must understand how you plant it, how the depth of it would look like. And then you must be committed to it, watering it, you know, weeding it and all of that. And the responses that you give is what will make you make your plan to be rooted. And it's the same way that works with you as a Christian. The Lord would help us in Jesus name. And I said career advancement. When we talk about career advancement, we say it simply means you progressing the way you progress in your chosen profession. And you know, I'm human resource practitioner and you know, it, 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 it can be as a result of an enhanced job titles. It can be increased responsibility. It can be expanded skill sets. And of course, it can be greater remuneration. All of this you put together to say that, okay, because I don't know at this time and age, somebody will say that I have increased responsibility. I'm always challenged to do my work. And if you are not getting remunerated, that commensurate with the challenges that, you know, the excitement would, would, would not be complete. So it is important for us to understand that the progression is in diverse ways and it can be en enhanced job title, increased responsibility, expanded skill sets, and of course, a greater remuneration. And I said relationship itself is a vital aspect of human existence. We portray our connection with one another. It is a vital aspect of human existence. Why I'm here today is because I have a link with you people and it is called a relationship. And I said it can be romantic, it can be platonic, it can be familiar and on and on and on and on like that. Okay, to the subject of the day, how do you stay rooted with God? How do you stay rooted with God? I remember some, some maybe no, not, not up to two years from now, when Dusi Oyekon was... Uh, at uh, one of these um, House of the Rock program, and he was asked, what is the fragrance of your worship? His response was that he stays there. He gives God what? Quality time. He gives God quality time. So if you want to have a root, you know, that is deeply in, in God, you know, a spiritual root that is very strong and cannot be shaken, you know, you must have, you stay there, you must spend quality time with God. And when I say spending quality time with God, I mean in the times of prayer, in the study of the word, and even in your attentiveness to his responses, in terms of instructions, in terms of guidance, in terms of direction, he stays there. Quality time that you need to give to God. For me, what I think I have done over the years and has worked for me is that I have my alarm set for everything that I do. For my prayer time, for the time of the study, like from 12, I have one set for 12 a.m. I have one set for 12, I mean 2 p.m. And there is one for 4 a.m. 4 a.m. already I'm awake. So one of it must work for me in a day. I'm just trying to share experiences that, you know, Somebody might pick it and it can work for the person. I set alarm for everything that I do. I put it, you know, in that perspective so that I ensure that I can, I can also have my own time with God. Because it's difficult if you say that 
if you look at so many things, so many constraints, and you can't be giving excuses to God. Ah, is this work that you are giving to me that has, you know, disconnected me even, even from spending quality time with you? If you have a friend, the only way that you can make that relationship to grow is to spend quality time without your friend. If you disconnect from calling, if you disconnect from having uh, some time together, then that friendship is not, uh, it's not it at all. Something is missing there. So it's the same way it works with God. And another thing that I've done over the years, whether it is, you know, spiritual assignment that you give to me, just like, you know, I'm making this presentation or in my office, if I have to do self trainings and all of that, the first thing that I do is I talk to God. I don't start by doing research. I don't start by doing research. I first talk to God. This is what I want to do. I have been asked to make this, uh, you know, presentation. I have my materials already. For some of the soft trainings that I do, I have my materials already, but I'll still talk to God. And then when I sleep in the night, I have my notes by my bedside because I wait to get feedbacks. And when I get those feedbacks, they are on, on, that, on those feedbacks, then I develop my notes. These are things that have worked for me. And that is, you know, those are things that can also help us to stay rooted, stay committed even to God. And I said, another thing that we can do is engage in relationship with believers. The Proverbs in chapter 27, verse 17 says, iron sharpens iron. You need to engage. Um, th th there is a place in the Bible that, you know, um, okay, I'm not sure where it is in the Bible, but I know that we always say this. I, I can't recollect. We always say this, that... Um, um, we always say this, that um, we learn, we learn a particular verse of the Bible and a minister would pick, for example, um, Mr. Dikin Olaika has spoken on this topic and he has looked at it in another angle. We believe that it is by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? And I am also looking at it maybe from a, a, a similar aspect and at another time, not too similar aspect of it. We believe that because we are children of God, we have been led by the Spirit even in the preparation of this thing. So you don't seem to know it all. A Bible verse, 10 ministers can speak on that Bible verse and it would, it would minister differently even to, to you. Are you with me? Another point that I, I, that I have on my slide ways to stay connected i said give yourself to selfless service selfless service not because my head usher will see me or because somebody will give commendation not grudgingly it must be from the depth of your heart and you know i make reference to the story of the talent in the bible which we, we cannot uh, take now but we can look at it later on matthew 25 from verse 14 to 30. it talks about talents how do you we are still talking about how do you grow how do you ensure that you thrive in your spiritual life? Which is the basis. If you get it right in your spiritual life, just like, I can, like I've said when I started, you know, the introduction, you get it right in all aspects of your life. You must engage in selfless service to God. Somebody got one talent and he says he knows that my master is a difficult person. And what happened eventually? The one that he got was collected from him. May that not be our portion in Jesus' name. And then I said that reaching out with help to others reaching up with helping hands to others you know the, the disciples of god asked jesus he said when i was hungry you did not give me food when i needed house you did not he said we didn't there was never a time that we see you that you needed all of these things and you didn't we didn't give it to you he said as much as you have not done it to any of the people in the same manner you have not done it to me if you cannot care for the people that you see because they are my people, you have not done it to me. So one of the things that makes you to stay connected is also by reaching out to people with your helping hands. I will quickly run through the points again. Give quality time to God. If you want to stay rooted in your spirit, give quality time to God. Stay there. Ensure that it is not negotiable. It is not negotiable. And then I said, iron sharpens iron. Relate with people that you know they are spiritually standing ensure that mean uh, programs that would enrich your spiritual life you are not missing there that's another thing and then i said you give yourself to selfless service 
And then I also said, you must be ready to reach out with epinans. And then I will go to the next one. How do you thrive in your career? I said career management itself is a process in which is spiritual. The process is spiritual in the sense that because it has to do with your, the first step of it has to do with your self-awareness. You must discover yourself. And this comes to when you think about yourself on your own. You look inwardly. Who is Bemi Sola? What are the things that I am passionate about? What are the things that gives me joy? And if you feel that, okay, I may not be too good about it, you can consult with, with experts. We have experts who, that can help you to discover yourself. You must first discover yourself if you want to try in any career. You must know your passion. You must know your, your talent. You must know your style of work. You must be critical about those things. And that, that is when you can talk about success and you can talk about satisfaction in all factors. And then I said the next one is self-actualization. The next step is self, after you have, you have done what is called self-awareness, uh, then the next one is self-actualization. A business coach, German Mercury, stated that self-actualization is a state of always looking to improve yourself it is a state of always looking to self-improve and at this stage you are on your toes striving to attain full potentials i said at the stage of self-actualization you are expected to learn unlearn and relearn i want you to take note of that at the stage of your self-actualization you are expected to learn unlearn and relearn what do I mean? For every chosen career, there is definitely knowledge gap. Nobody knows it all. I cannot say, okay, I, my human resource practice did not start by word of mouth. The first thing that I did was to acquire the needed knowledge. And I got certifications to justify that. Yes, I have gone through the no process of learning and I have successfully completed the process. So you must first understand that you must learn. That's the first aspect of self-actualization. You must learn. What are the things that you need to know in that your chosen career? So that nobody will just toss you here and there. You know, somebody will not say, ah, he doesn't know what he's doing. She doesn't know what he's doing. And then the next one is on learning. I said on learning involves dropping practices and processes that are becoming obsolete as new technologies, methods, and attitude emerges. Dropping practices and processes that are becoming obsolete as technologies, methods, and attitude emerges. And I give this instance, there was a time that we used typewriter to get our words into printable version. But at this time and age, if somebody is a secretary, and that is what you have chosen as a career. And you are still there carrying that typewriter, trying to struggle to ensure that you get, you know, your work documents done. I'm sure the person is missing somewhere. That person is not the kind of person that we are talking about at all. So you must learn, you must unlearn, and you must relearn. You must learn, you must unlearn, and you must relearn. And then when I talk about relearning, I did mention, I gave an example that, you know, at, at some point in our, in our work uh, career, um, all this, you know, all these leaders, all these management people, they feel that you cannot do remote work. It's impossible because it will be out of control and out of collaboration. But where are we now today? Where are we today? This is what we are talking about. We are at that stage that we are relearning. And I say relearning is a process of reconceiving old knowledge in the context of new information. You know, just a way that you challenge your mental mode to accept the new normal. And one of the things that pandemic did was to force our leaders, our organizations to accept what is called remote, some do hybrid, 
some do you know they, they have designed work in such a way that you can be anywhere or you can be everywhere and you'll still be doing what is expected of you and then in the next slide in the next slide i said it would also be important for me to make emphasis on the need to seek wisdom guidance when and where necessary proverbs 13 20 says walk with the wise and you'll become what you'll become wise so you must surround yourself with people that will add value to your life i have said it to some people before if you ask me if i have a best friend i will tell you that i don't have a best friend why don't i have a best friend because i believe that the contribution that a can add to me b will not or may not necessarily add the same value to me and that's the way i carefully select the people that i call my friends the kind of value that you would add when i need this aspect of life and i need to talk to somebody about this aspect of life i should be able to trust my friend a to deal with it and i'm looking at another one that is spiritual i should be able to talk about b to deal with it i'm looking at the one that is circular or you know professional i should be able to look at d to say d can handle this for me i still have I think I've left uh, IGI now since uh, 2018. And, you know, my colleague that I left there will still have me because human resource practice, you know, cases can never be the same, but we have the same principles. We still, you know, brainstorm on how to deal with all of those things. If I want to talk about spiritual things, I will not go to her because, of course, she's a Muslim. I will not go to her. So you must work with the people that are wise so that you can also be what? can be wise the lord will help us in jesus name and the next slide i said it is critical to embrace learning on learning and learning to continue to stay relevant and for you to advance in your career you will agree with me that some jobs that have existed some decades ago have disappeared the work of secretary if you go to schools to i mean go to our institutions today nobody's studying secretarial studies again it means that what it has disappeared and many more will still go the same way but the only thing that is important for you to thrive it is to continue to equip yourself with new skill and ensure so that you can ensure that you are stable and you are you are easily adapting to changes and by that you can progress in your career you know for some of us if you look at age you will say age is not on our side you discover that if anybody wants to em employ now they'll be looking at the the gen z or the the gen gen y which of course people like me i don't i don't fall into that category but fortunately for some of us what we have done to what we do on on a regular basis in to ensure that you know we equip ourselves with new sets of skills so that at least if you i'm given the opportunity to express myself and talk to you about what i do you would have no other option than to consider me you would now say uh, no age is not a barrier <laughs> the lord would help us in jesus name so and i said it is also important for you the next slide i said it is also important for you to evaluate your progress regularly you must also e e evaluate your progress regularly set aside time to review your career goals and progress regularly evaluate whether your actions align with your faith and values celebrate your milestones learn from the challenges and make adjustments as necessary you know i remember that in this my human resource uh, career i have moved from these different uh, industries i've worked with ria fatimele and co yeah, Fatimele Anko is an estate management organization. I'd worked with, I'd worked with IGI Insurance, and currently I'm working with the uh, hospitality industry. And all the while, you discover that the human resource process might look the same, but they differ because of the differences that we have in the organizations. So what you need to do is when you come on board. You must understand how it is done there when you come on board you understand how it is done there and you ensure that you know 
you e evaluate what you have done for yourself and you see how you are progressing in your career. And some of the things that give satisfaction, honestly, that makes you to really want to do more. For me, I started as a you know, human resource uh, executive and I deal with uh, queries, I deal with leave, I deal with all transactional human resource functions. Those are the things that you know I've started with. But now nobody would give me transactional functions at human resource level because you know it's more advanced. I've gone far beyond all of that. I deal with what is called strategic, you know, functions. I deal with what is called strategic, and you know, and I'm not stopping there. I'm still looking at doing mediation. In fact, currently I'm running a training with the multi-door. Multidoc Court House. If anybody knows Lagos State Multidoc Court House, I'm currently running, you know, a mediation training with them. So that even where some lawyers can do mediation, I can also stay and also do mediation. So it means that you must, you know, look at those places that you need to make adjustments, learn, get challenged, adjust where necessary. And I can tell you, with God on your side, heaven, sky cannot limit you. The Lord will help all of us in Jesus' name. Then we want to talk Amen. about Christian relationship. We want to talk about Christian relationship. That is the aspect that I think is the last part of, of this uh, session, Christian relationship. I said as individuals, we are involved in four different kinds of relationship, either with God, either with self, with others, and with the world at large. But something is connecting this relationship. Something is the connect or is the link for all this relationship. Colossians chapter 3, verse 12 says, As God's chosen one, only a beloved, clothe yourself with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Bear with one another. And if anyone has a complaint against another, forgive. If anyone has a, a complaint against one another, forgive each other, just as the Lord has forgiven you. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? All of those things are things you must be compassionate. In any relationship that you find yourself, you must be kind-hearted. You must, you must show, you must show some, 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 some level of love. I said the Bible teaches in my next slide, I said the Bible teaches that love is the foundation of all relationship. And that love should be char characterized by selflessness and forgiveness. That is where I want to center it on. Three things that you need to know about any relationship as God has ordained is love, which is characterized by selflessness and forgiveness. The Bible commands us, which I have said before, love your neighbor as yourself. You know, I don't want to repeat all of that. Selflessness, I said, is a foundational Christian virtue and the willingness to make sacrifices for others. Selflessness is unconditional. It is unconditional. In the book of Philippians chapter 2, verse 4, it says that we should look out for the good and interest of others. We should look out for the good and interest of others. First Thessalonians 5.25 also made us to understand that see that no one repays anyone evil for evil, but always seek to do good to one another and to everyone. Say so for any thriving relationship, you can never stop giving. And your giving is, you are not expecting anything in return. Your giving is the kind of giving that you will not expect that, okay, I want to give you a pen because I know that, okay, maybe somebody is doing birthday now and you have bought a gift for that person. And on your birthday, when the person doesn't give you a gift, then you get angry. No, you are not showing the kind of love that God is talking about. It must be selfless. You must be able to make sacrifices. It must be something that you are giving from your heart. For any relationship, you can never stop giving. Whatever it is needed, you must be ready to give. One authority, Victor Asemota said, and I quote, no be rich people, they help people. Oh. Now good people, they help people. I'll take that again. 
No be good, no be rich people, they help people. Now good people, they help people. So for you to thrive in any relationship, you must be part of the good people that is willing to always give. Be that selfless giver in your relationship. And one of the key things that will make you to thrive in your relationship is that. The next slide I said, forgiveness is the only human force that can stop disintegration and uphold peace in any relationship. Forgiveness, even before the first thing offends you, put it in your subconscious that you are going to forgive. If you really want to thrive in that relationship, before the offense happens, program it in your head that you are going to forgive the person. And I say in my slide here, I said, the key to forgiveness is to look at Christ and all that he has forgiven you for. How many things God has forgiven you for? Eh? If we begin to, if we remember the story of the, of the woman that committed adultery, and Jesus Christ asked them that anyone that is with no sin should be the first to stone this woman. Nobody could stay. All of them disappear. So one of the key elements for you to thrive in your relationship, you must be ready to forgive. The Bible says, then, then Peter came to him and said, Lord, how oft shall my brother sin against me? And I forgive him. Till seven times, Jesus said unto him, I say not unto thee, until seven times, but seventy times seven. Seventy times, seven times. So I'll just run through that again. To thrive in every relationship, you must look at love that is characterized by selflessness and by forgiveness. You must look at that. When you are selfless, you are ready to make sacrifices. You are ready to go to extra mile to ensure that your brother, your husband, your spouse, your wife, your friend is comfortable, is okay, is at peace. And you must be ready to forgive. Ah, that thing that you did to me, I will never forgive you. No, you are not looking out to thrive in your relationship. You must be ready to forgive. And in my closing, in my closing thought, I said for us to connect and do great exploits in all, all of these ramifications. It, it will take three Ds of discipline, denial, and determination. It will take the three Ds of discipline, denial, and determination to thrive in all facets of human life. When I say discipline, are you that kind of person that would, would not say no, or you will, anything just goes? A Christian that is disciplined will know when to say no. No. For several years, I was only resourcing and career development. And I remember that, you know, I sent people for trainings and I paid them extra codes. And for some of them that knows me very well, if you envelope it and you want to give me something to feel that, ah, she processed this for me, I will not collect. I am only doing my work. I have a colleague that was working with me at that time. And there was one time somebody traveled and he now bought a dress and he bought the dress. I don't know, maybe the man just wanted to get my attention, but I didn't. He now gave it to that, my colleague. And when my colleague took it home, you know, the husband told him that this is not your size. This is Mrs. Bilal's size. And I'm sure that because this person discovered that she will not collect it, that's why she's giving you. You are the one that I should call Olojukokoro. <laughs> what your robots call Olojukokoro. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? For you to be able to thrive, you must have discipline. Not everything that goes. If they go this way, you will, you will go with them. If you go that way, you must know when to say no. Then denial. I said there must be that point of renunciation to be able to attain the goal. You want to have a relationship with God and you are not really ready to give quality time to that God. You must be willing to deny yourself things that you have to put aside to be able to give quality time to God. 
even your career i've talked about self-actualization you need to learn you need to learn you need to relearn you must deny yourself some things maybe the time that you're supposed to be watching african magic or doing something that is really not profitable commit it to that you need to deny yourself to be able to get to the point that you would attain your goals in life then you must be determined display of some level of doggedness and no compromises i'm not looking back i'm not going to be a pillar of sorts and all of these things would work for you perfectly in your career perfectly in your relationship and of course with getting you deeply rooted in your spiritual life with god i want to say a very big thank you i'm sorry that this is coming a bit late and we are running behind uh, uh we are a bit delayed but i i want to trust god that uh, we have been able to share a few knowledge god bless us and let us have a very good evening wow 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 what a time well done well done well done Lonnie. really appreciate you thank you and please we need to give her a special a uh, you know another appreciation because she was having issues with her network and she had to rush all the way from her place down to my place here in fact really appreciate you man thank you so much for the for the sacrifice for the love for everything we are very grateful I'm celebrating you it's a pleasure <laughs> so house please there any question anybody do you have any question for so we have run out of time but can't do it without having questions any question please anybody with any question is anybody raising hand and i'm not seeing okay i want to believe we have um i mean we've we know i mean we've understood you know if you have no question that means it's either you've understood it too much, too well or you don't understand it but i know we understand that's why there's no question it's not it's not that we don't understand thank you so much you know, we really appreciate you for um everything we are grateful more insight more understanding more grace in jesus name so um well, I think we are done for the night because of the time. I won't want us to um, go to to take too much of our time again because we have run out of time already. And our daddy is still on the call. Wow, we are grateful, sir. Thank you, daddy. Daddy Dutola. Thank you so much for tonight, our daddy and our mommy. We are grateful, so, so grateful. So everyone, the youth week continues tomorrow. We have um, uh, tomorrow.